Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ari, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado, let's go. Today's first story. In this story, despite a seemingly perfect marriage of four years, memories of his wife's betrayal haunt him. Their relationship began with a chance encounter at a grocery store and evolved amid family challenges. Despite his support, his wife was unfaithful, planning to leave him for a co-worker. Discovering her deceit, he exposed her, leading to divorce and a shattered heart. He now seeks closure and healing, harboring no rush to move on. Now let's get into the story. My wife and I were married for four years. Our relationship years and marriage were just perfect. Each time I remember how my wife broke my trust, it still hurts me because I remember how much we went through and overcame to get to the level we were. Yet she forgot about everything and destroyed our happy home and lives. The first time I met my wife, the stars aligned in the right order for me that day and something pushed me to go grocery shopping in the middle of the week off from work, unlike my usual weekend shopping. While I was in the store taking the things I needed, I noticed an average height, light-skinned girl walked down the row I was shopping on, and she smiled at me. I returned the smile out of shyness, but I focused more on what I needed and left her in that row. A few minutes later, I was done shopping, but before I took the things to the cashier to pay for them, I noticed she was already driving out and I didn't think much about her. About two minutes drive from the store, I saw her standing on the road with the hood of her car open, and I didn't expect a psychic to tell me that she was having car issues. Out of kindness, I pulled over and asked if I could help. Thankfully, she was having a minor battery issue, and it was definitely something I could help with. When we were done fixing her car, we talked a bit, and she willingly gave me her number without me asking, and we said goodbyes. One week passed, and I had forgotten about her and her number. It wasn't until the day I was looking for an old friend's contact that I saw her name saved. I remembered her instantly and felt terrible for not calling her after days. Without wasting time, I called her and introduced myself, then we fixed. A date. She was a bit uptight at first, but after much persuasion and my begging her to let me make things right, she agreed to her date. Our first date wasn't at a fancy restaurant or an eatery like the regular dates. She insisted that if we were meeting, it would have to be at a popular park. We both knew, and I agreed. Later that evening, we met and talked about ourselves, and we ended up having more even picnics and park dates after that. When we met, we were both freshly out of college and lived at our parents' house. I was fortunate to get retained at an organization I interned at, and the pay was not really good, but it was okay to keep things going until I got a good job. My wife, on the other hand, worked three jobs simultaneously because her mom was sick and she needed all the money she could get to buy medication and take care of things at the house. Her father worked too, but he was inconsistent and spent all his money on alcohol. He didn't contribute to the house. So the responsibility fell on my wife and her younger brother. Eventually, we got married because I didn't think I could live without her. We loved each other so much, and we were always together. Even when she was mourning, I was there for her emotionally, physically, and otherwise. I supported her as usual, and we continued our lives together after her mom passed. I always treated her like my special woman, and I gifted her whenever I could afford to. In fact, two months after her mother's burial, I took her on a one-week vacation so she could take her mind off everything, and it worked. Luckily for us, Shortly after we got married, she got employed at one of her dream organizations, and her job was soft. Her pain was great, three times better than what I earned, and I was so happy for her. I felt like God was rewarding her for all her hard work when her mother was alive. But sadly, the first one and a half years of her doing her new job didn't come with changes for us. I was still the one taking care of all the bills at home, and that was because she had so many debts to settle. After she settled most of the debts she racked up in the past years, we began to see changes. All that while, she neither bought herself clothes nor anything new. 
She mainly wore clothes from thrift stores and fairly used shoes and bags. When she got that month's salary, the first thing she did was get herself a new phone and some clothes. She also settled all her credit card debts, which was such a relief for us. Since I was more of a tech person, the first thing she did when she came home that day was to give me her new phone to help set it up, and I was glad to do that. She needed me to transfer all of her photos and messages from her old phone to her new phone, and that was how I stumbled on her iCloud account. Somehow, one of the names she saved on her phone piqued my interest. It was the name she used to call me when we started dating, but as we grew older together, she stopped calling me that. The name had sent her message through a nap. I didn't even know about it, and they had been communicating frequently, even more than we did. I read some of their messages, and I was forced to read them all to satisfy my curiosity. To my greatest shock, I discovered that my wife was having an affair with one of her co-workers, and they had been dating for the past eight months. I also found that the evenings she told me she was working overtime at the office were clearly a lie. They had been going on fancy dates and even took pictures of themselves when they were at it. The most shocking part was when I found out that my wife and her lover were planning for her to divorce me so she could move in with him while her lover's wife and kids could return to his parents' house. I was very disappointed and betrayed, and I could not believe she had been playing me the whole while, even though she knew I genuinely loved her. The funny thing was, I was planning to get her an expensive gift that week to appreciate and encourage her to work harder, but she ruined everything. I was so mad that I forwarded the messages between them to my phone as evidence, then I got her HR's email address and anonymously sent everything to them. I knew very well that their company was against co-workers dating, and I knew they would get fired. Well, it worked. She came home the next day in tears, claiming that her company decided to cut down on staff, and she was fired. To her surprise, instead of consoling her like she expected, I laughed and told her I was responsible for everything, but she didn't understand me. When I showed her their conversation from my phone, she started crying again and asked me to forgive her. She said that she did it because I was too dull and nice. She also said it was because I did everything she wanted without complaint, and she wanted something different and someone who would give her a tough time. I was devastated, angry, and in tears. I kicked her out of my house, and shortly after that, we divorced. I didn't want anything to do with her or her family anymore and if she didn't leave when I asked her to. Maybe I would have hit her, and it would put me in a more terrible state. Before she left, I reminded her that her late mother would be so disappointed in her, and hearing that made her cry even more. I also blocked her on all the social media platforms we shared, and I warned her brother to not come close to my house, or he'd be arrested. Finally, after staying at that house for four months, I moved to a different location because I could not handle people constantly asking me of her. I also heard she went to confront her lover, thinking the wife would divorce him so she could move in with him, but he embarrassed her and his wife even hit her. Most times, I think she played me from the beginning, but I hate to admit that I was used to it. I wasted a greater part of my life and finances for nothing, and I hope she is miserable wherever she is. I am slowly moving on but I know it will take a while and I'm in no rush. Today's second story. In this story, after discovering his wife's infidelity, a devoted husband orchestrates a public humiliation for her on their anniversary, revealing evidence of her affair with her boss. Despite her attempts to reconcile, he divorces her, ensuring their daughter is spared the drama. Her boss also faces consequences as his wife divorces him. He concludes that his wife's actions indicate a lack of genuine love for him. Now let's get into the story. My wife and I had been married for seven years before I found out she was cheating on me. Before I married Mia, I had always known her to be a go-jetter, coal smasher and career woman. Even before she got the job at the organization she worked for, she always talked about making an impact in the world with her business ideas, dedication, and commitment. So I was not surprised when she told me she had gotten the job at such a world-class organization. I, on the other hand, was not as work-driven as Mia. I just wanted to make enough money to take care of my family, do the things I liked, and we could travel whenever we wanted to. Since we dated for about a year and we got married after that, 
I discussed children with Mia and we agreed to have children whenever we were ready. After four years of being married to each other, we had our daughter, and because there were complications with her pregnancy and childbirth. Mia and I agreed that one child was okay after years of working as a data analyst for my organization, I got promoted. This promotion allowed me to work from home and spend more time with our young daughter Hillary and always be there for her. Over the years, Mia also got promoted and her promotion came with a greater workload. She had to be out of the house as early as 7.30 p.m. every morning to be in traffic and she would return as late as 9 p.m. and every time I complained. She'd say she had many meetings to attend, so I'd let it slide as if that was not enough. Mia barely spent time with us during weekends. She'd always have a meeting or two to attend. And since I already knew how passionate she was about her profession right from our dating days, I could not ask her to stop or even cut down on it. I didn't want to be the husband who would ask his wife to stop chasing her dreams or give less to her profession because she was married to me. So I'm trying to be supportive in every form I could. With all that happened, I became responsible for our daughter Hillary, and I was with her when she woke up and was there to put her to bed. I cooked, cleaned, and did the laundry and everything. Mia. Done at home. I also love that I spent a lot of time with her, because when I was young, my father was barely around to spend time with my siblings and me, so I wanted to be different. Hillary and I bonded so well that even when Mia was home, she preferred to come to me for whatever she needed, and Mia didn't even mind. One Saturday afternoon I was at home working when one of my friends called me. At first, he asked for Mia and I told him she had stepped out an hour earlier for a business meeting, but he laughed. He said he was at a restaurant and had seen Mia and a man cuddling and feeding each other. I didn't believe him because I thought he was playing pranks on me, but he insisted he could send me proof. Shortly after we ended the call, he sent pictures to my WhatsApp and I got the notification. When I opened them, I saw Mia and her boss cuddle together as he had described, and from the smiles on their faces, it was evident that they were having a great time with each other. He even made a small video that captured when Mia's boss kissed Mia on the lips and they giggled. Afterward, I was speechless. I went through the pictures several times to be sure my eyes were not messing with me, and they weren't. It was really Mia in the photos. It was the same blue gown she wore. I recognized her boss the moment I saw him. As I was still staring at my phone, my friend called back and he asked what I would do. I told him nothing, but before he ended the call he warned me to not do anything stupid. I cried that afternoon because of the pain of betrayal and it was almost like 100 bee stings. I loved Mia so much and I could not believe she could do such a thing to me. While I was in my miserable state, an idea came to me and I called one of her office guys and asked if I could get a projector screen for a special surprise. I had for her on our anniversary and he said yes. When Mia returned home later that evening, she noticed my countenance had changed. But I told her I was feeling sick in my tummy, and she believed me. The following Monday was meant to be our anniversary and I had already made plans for us. But after I saw the pictures, I called and cancelled all of my bookings and reservations. I'm sure Mia didn't even remember it was our anniversary because she left for work excitedly and didn't mention anything about it. I allowed her to get to her office and settle first. Then approximately two hours later I went there. As soon as I got there, it was announced on the speaker that her husband had something special for her, and I asked everyone's attention to be on the projector screen. When she heard that, she walked up to me, kissed me, and held my hands in excitement to show off while her eyes were fixed on the screen. Immediately, the first video of her kissing her boss began to play. She froze and could not even look me in the eye. Then a slideshow of all the pictures followed the video. Everyone gasped in shock and she ran out of there, horrified the moment she stepped out. I followed her too because I wasn't ready for the gossip. I went home before her, but she showed up hours later in tears. Her hair was messy and her dissolved mascara made her look horrible. When she entered the house, she tried to beg me, but I asked her to pick up her bags in the living room and go. Instead, she went on her knees and started to beg, and that's when I yelled at her and pushed her out of the house. I was smart enough to take Hillary to my sister's house because I didn't want her to witness such terrible scenes. We divorced after that, and her boss also resigned from the organization, but his wife divorced him too. 
When she heard and saw the videos, I thought Mia would end up with her boss, but she didn't. He wanted nothing to do with her and blamed her for tearing his family apart. After our divorce, she showed up twice looking homeless and miserable, but I threatened to call the police on her if she showed up again. She never did. I don't think she ever loved me because she would not have hurt me that way if she did.